the business on RTE Radio 1 with AIB. It takes a certain kind of brave to run a business. We see it. We back it. Sticking with magazines as the industry transitions into a more digital world, many of us will remember the days when we waited patiently for our favourite magazines to appear on the shelves. From Twinkle to Teen Vogue, not my own personal favourites, I have to be honest, they brought us to another world, as our reporter Shifra Mulqueen has been finding out. I was a big reader of Smash Hits, Just 17, The Enemy, The Face and Sassy Magazine. They were my favourites. Author and journalist Anna Carey has always been a huge fan of magazines. From Bunty as a child to a more glamorous offering in her teenage years. I'd get them to keep Vogue for me every month. That felt very sophisticated. It was like, I collect my Vogue today, Mr O'Reilly. And there's very unglamorous news agents in North Dublin. <laughs> like just 17 which I think were really helpful especially back then they were like my friends and my sole source of sex education they would give answers to questions that people would not have talked to their parents about in a million zillion years. Anna has kept most of her magazines for over 30 years. So I'm looking now at a random issue I pulled from the shelves which May 1994 five ways to tame your mother Oh, wow. Get a job, you lazy slacker. That's very early 90s. If you can smell it, it's killing you. What does that mean? I don't know, but it was all part of the kind of, you were part of the the gang. But anybody can join, because all you have to do is pay two quid. It it was full time. I mean, there would have to be two of us here in the morning to just deal with the deliveries that we were getting. Get the names on. Don't leave anybody out. If there's a free gift on it, make sure that it wasn't missing because you'd hear all about it. Mary Kelly has been running a newsagents and card shop in County Clare for over 40 years. She remembers the days when buying magazines was a weekly routine for many people. All the comics, Judy, Bunty, Mandy, and then up along the way with the sports ones like Match and Shoot. Oh, the boys would come in and they'd be peppering. They were just, they couldn't even wait. <laughs> They'd come in and it's like, oh, Mary's here and out, she has my comic. And it was as if theirs was the only one that was put away. There's a Brian's Corner shop in Lanesborough, along with selling the best 99 ice creams in the country. They also stocked Match Magazine. Sports writer with the 42, Gavin Cooney, got his love of football from magazines like Match. However, Panini sticker albums were his first love. Oh, like the sheer excitement about getting a pack is hard to describe. Then you tear it open and then you find, oh my God, here's Steve Finn and I've, I've had him nine times already. The stickers were a hit in the schoolyard. It would generally happen during the break, uh, in the shed, you would gather in the corner of a shed and it would be doled out secretly. Like <laughs> whoever was the, the ruling mob and like the New York docks in the 1930s, doling out work to those who'd paid their subscription fees. It was something along those lines. It was our first introduction really to market economics, you know, of, of the laws of supply and demand and of surplus. The surplus being all these Moritz Volses and Antoine Sibierskis I had <laughs> with a sticky back on them. As well as match and sticker albums, Gavin was interested in other subscriptions. You know those kind of rip-off collectible magazines, 52 issues and assemble, you know, 52 parts of this toy car, etc. I would fall hook, line and sink for all of those. And then the shop would stop stocking them maybe midway through the build because of rank lack of interest. Everyone else in the parish would stop buying it, except me. There were three sort of weekly papers in Britain, all covering much the same terrain. They were known as the Inkies because when you got them on the Friday, the ink wasn't dry. So your hands would be covered in black ink. Assistant editor of Hot Press magazine, Stuart Clark, was inspired by magazines like Sounds, Melody Maker and The NME. And for me, it was when David Bowie turned into Ziggy Stardust. It was so sort of visceral. And just seeing that first photograph of him, you know, I, I was nine, the, the, the hair and the makeup, I was going like, what is this? It was like finding out that an, an alien existed, but this alien lived about 15 miles away in Beckenham. If I didn't buy too many gobstoppers or curly whirlies, I could afford the melody maker, maybe the, the NME. 
and these magazines made you feel like you owned a band. It was your band and you'd fight to the death over them. And that tribalism has kind of gone now. And, and things are different. I, I, I recognise that. But, but it's kind of sad that we've lost that sort of almost stamp collectory thing of going, this is mine. Yeah, some of the ones that I have here, they're, they're all going for at least 30 each. One of the ones that I have in my hands at this moment going for 79. Wow. Given these vintage magazines are so scarce nowadays, it's easy to make a quick buck on eBay. But would Anna ever consider parting with her editions of Sassy Magazine? They just remind me so much of how I felt at that age and what I was into that I just could not part with them. They're sticking with me for now. Gavin, on the other hand... Do you say 70 quid? I've never actually looked it up. I'll, I'll, hang on. I'll, uh, Match Magazine. Vintage Match Weekly Magazine. Zinedine Zidane on the cover. I, I remember this distinctly. <laughs> it's worth £4.61. Pence. So, <laughs> I mean, allowing it for inflation, I would have lost money. She from Old Queen reporting there.